Ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum. What's good, people? Welcome once again to the second episode of the year of the Rockwell Radio Show. I am so honored that you're here. I'm glad to be here. God has blessed us all to be here. So you know what we do every time around this time? We need everybody to go ahead and take that finger and follow the three steps of the Rockwell Radio Show. Step one, go ahead and hit that like and share button. Step two, tag somebody. And last but not least, make this be the night that you subscribe to the Rockwell Radio Show. Law, have mercy. We got a guest for you. That is what we've been waiting on. Tonight's guest, matter of fact, before we even get to the guest, we want to talk to you for a minute. Everybody, wh- where are you watching from? We want to know where you watching from, what mosque, what city, what neighborhood, where y'all from? Go ahead, put it in the chat right now. Let us know where you're watching from. We want to, yeah, yes, yeah, you. Let us know where you're watching from, what city, who's in the house, who's in the building. And while you all are doing that, I want to bring on the camera real quick, as I always do every week. My brother, my producer, the one who makes the Rockwell Radio Show happen from the background scenes. Let's give it up real quick for Big Dave C in the building. He's here every week making it happen. My brother, how you feel, Black? Yeah, glad to be here. Very happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I keep forgetting you be doing that. I'm back here chilling in the background. Praise me to a lot. Thank oh, you, sir. We, we got a show today, brother, so I thank you. Are you ready to go to work? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Let's go to work. Now, as we get ready to jump into our guest, you all know who's on the air with us today. I want to say a few things. Uh, first of all, if you're new to the Rockwell Radio Show, welcome, welcome, welcome. This applause is for you. We only have our guest for 60 minutes, so I don't want to tarry too long before I bring him on. But what we do here at the Rockwell Radio Show, we cover hip hop, we cover culture. We cover the relationship between the aforementioned and the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and his top student, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. So today, because our guest, I had to go class eight day. I, you know, I, I couldn't have my hat to the side and talk to a brother minister today. <laughs> so let's talk just a bit about why we're here. We want to talk about and first bring attention to This phrase called well-made man. Well-made man as a phrase, where I first heard it, I encountered it in the Holy Quran, which it appears as the 17th verse of the 19th surah, which is titled Maryam, where Allah says in that particular verse, Big Day, he's going to send Maryam, he said, his spirit in the form of a well-made man. And you should go and study that scripture because there's a lot in it. Again, that's the 19th surah, the 17th verse. And the question we're going to raise and talk about today with our guest is, what exactly is a well-made man? Depending upon who you ask, if you ask 10 people, 10 different answers might come back on what is a well-made man. Women want to know where can they find one. Men want to know what, how can we be one. So I am so glad today that we got a guest in the house tonight that's going to answer these questions for us. If you want to identify the well-made men around us, we first have to take a look at, let me rephrase. I want to to say this right. I want to get this exactly right. We talk about 
what a well-made man is, we have to examine the qualities of them to properly identify them. Let me be very clear. So to set the tone for tonight's conversation, I want to point out to you something that my son said when he was only five years old. They wrote a clip of Sadiq, something he said to set the tone for tonight's conversation. Check this out. That's my boy when he was five years old. His words set the stage for what we're going to talk about tonight. Our guest tonight, and I know it's cliche. It's cliche to say somebody needs no introduction, Dave. But in this case, it's really true. He is the student minister of Muhammad Mosque 74 there in Indianapolis, commonly known for those who live in that area called the Miracle on 38th Street. He is the author of six books, one of which I happen to own now, two, one of which I've read. It's called Before You Say I Do. But the one we're going to be talking about today is called A Well-Made Man. He is a highly sought after speaker. He's taught in mosques, churches, schools, colleges, conferences all around this country and abroad. And you've seen him on places like The Breakfast Club. You've seen him on Ebro in the Morning. You've seen him on the Joe Button Podcast. But most importantly, you've seen him among the people in the highways and the byways, helping out people as a student minister of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Please welcome for the first time to the Rock World Radio Show, my brother and yours, student minister, Nuri Muhammad. <laughs> Wa alaikum salam, my big brother. Brother Vaughn, Brother Vaughn, man, it is such an honor and a privilege to be able to share space and time with you. I count it as a great joy this Saturday evening to be able to uh, sit in on this wonderful platform that Allah has blessed you to create. Um, I'm thankful for all the work that you do and all the sacrifice and long live Brother Sadiq. Long live, Brother Sadiq. Son, we love and we miss you. That's right. We're dedicating this one to you, dumb boy. There, there's so much I could have said, brother, in, in, in this introduction. It's, there's no way that we can fit all of this in 60 minutes, brother, <laughs> Minister Nuri. But we're going to try. We're going to try. Let's begin with this, dear brother. I got to get my notes together here. I got so many that I've taken after reading this incredible work. And let's begin by telling people first, before we even dive into the book, where it can be found. You can go right to his website, nurimohammed.com and order this book. Get it today. Get it today. Let's go to work, Dave. Now for question number one, we'll call this brother minister an icebreaker, if you will. Many in and out of the nation know your story. They know your resume. They can see your works. Um, but what I want to do is try to use this opportunity, Brother Minister, to probably give them something that they probably don't know. So name something about yourself that I didn't include in the introduction that many people might not know. Oh, man. Um, well, I guess I, I could say that what's not in, in the, intro, to the introduction is the um, this new ministry that Allah has opened up for myself and my, my wife 
where we are in commemoration of our daughter, uh, Kahara, and long live Kahara. We thank a lot for her. But that's right. We have uh, started a, uh, in her name, title, commemorating the title of her book, How to Heal and Hustle. Yes, we sir. have the Heal and Hustle Foundation. And right now we are uh, morning, noon, and night, weekdays and weekends uh, involved in interventions, group counseling sessions, individual counseling sessions of young soldiers all over the planet Beautiful. that are struggling with various different uh, mental challenges. And so far we've done over 50 interventions with a 100% success ratio. And we have almost 250 young soldiers in a heal and hustle group think tank that wow. we talk to consistently. So that's been, uh, I don't, you can't call it a hobby, habit, but it, or a hobby, but it has become a healing habit. Yes, sir. That we've taken on, uh, like most people take on hobbies, and we found healing from helping, uh, and that's something that that we have on the table. Uh, and on our plate right now, the Heal and Hustle Foundation and the work that Allah has blessed us to be able to do for young soldiers, male and female, all around the planet. Where can we send people to support that foundation? The easiest way uh, is healandhustle.com. Uh, we are a certified non-for-profit organization 501c3 uh, we don't have any grants or government money everything that we've been doing has been from the donations that people send and really financing from our own uh, pocket so go to healandhustle.com and, and you can click there to to, to donate healandhustle.com big dave you know what to do let's move forward real quick we only got him for 60 minutes. This is DJ Rockwell, and my guest tonight is our brother, our friend, student minister Nuri Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, let's start by peeling back the layers of this magnificent book. A Well-Made Man. Why this book? Why this message? Why now? Well, Brother Vaughn, in, in truth, the... Uh, first book that had come to my mind a few years ago was The Black Woman, God's Second Self. And I had always been experiencing positive peer pressure uh, from our people and in particular, the sisters, to, to put out a book that exclusively angled uh, from history, science, math, and most importantly, the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad yes, sir. on the solutions on the making of uh, a black woman and the helping of a black woman to make herself. Yes, sir. But once that book came out, of course, you know, the brother said, what about us? What about us? <laughs> and I already had been working uh, on a book to the brothers and it was titled Men of Conviction. And as a result of looking at it and then doing some more work as I began to edit and fine tune add more to it, take some things from it. Allah put it on my heart, a well-made man. Yes, sir. And from that, uh, we we were in the lab and by the grace of Allah, we released it uh, last year, a week before Father's Day. Yes, sir. And from the week before Father's Day to the week after Father's Day, it was the number one new release on Amazon by Allah's grace. Come on now. And anybody that knows that's not the easy thing to do because they, they drop 38,000 books a day uh, on wow. Amazon. So wow. um, I was, I'm was i thankful to Allah that, that he blessed us to be able to have that kind of uh, magnetism and momentum from all of the books that I have written, le lectures that I've done, and the work that we've been blessed to do uh, with group and one on ones, whatever it was, brother Vaughn, people people responded, and the testimonies that we've been receiving from the well made man book, not just from men yes, that sir. have used it as a sharpening device to make themselves greater men, but from the sisters 
who said, this book has been helping me get the best out of the man that I'm with. Come on. This book, as a single black mother, has helped me to fill in some blanks that I needed a man in my life to feel. I've been using the psychological weaponry from the book and the qualities that's listed in here to raise this into my son. So my son's not yet a man, but he's definitely in route to becoming a well-made man. So it's been, we, we, we've been by the grace of a lot. This book has been uh, doing really well. Yes, sir. In the sense of not just sales and numbers, but in what we put it out for, yeah. not money. We put it out for transformation. We didn't put it out to make change. We put it out to make change. Listen, come on now. And by oh, the yeah. grace of Allah, it has been making that change. Uh, and we have made a little change too. <laughs> <laughs> and ain't, ain't nothing wrong making a little change as we make change. Hey, brother. hey, and brother, Vi, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's what Obama meant, but if you can make change in people's <laughs> life and make a little change in your pocket, I think that's change you can believe in. When, come on now, when and when. Big Dave, let's remind the people how they can follow us and what the three rules of the Rockwell Radio Show are. Go ahead, everybody, somebody, and like and share this interview. Tag somebody who needs to hear it. And last but not least, make this be the day you subscribe and join the Rockwell Radio family on YouTube. Let's move on to this next question, Big Brother. On the outside cover yes. of the book, you cite... A scripture, 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, which reads as follows. It says, Big Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, while Dave is finding that particular slide, there it is, Big Dave. <laughs> it says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Why yeah. did you want us to draw our attention to that scripture? Yes, well, by reverse engineering, um, this kind of tells you what this book is, is, is to do for the mind of a man or the mind of a woman that wants to meet a man or mold a man or make a man like that out of their young son. Uh, it, it talks about when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child because I thought as a child, but now that I'm a man, I put away childish things. Yes, Reverse engineer that verse, not from being was to understood to, or where it was to spake to, to understood, to thought, reverse mm -hmm. engineer, however you think. When you think, you understand. When you understand, you speak. And when you speak, you become. So mm -hmm. this book was designed to, to help the, the black man in particular renegotiate uh, his definition of manhood by laying out 27 qualities or characteristics all through the book that make up what we learn from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the minister to the primary characteristics and traits of what a real man looks like, expounding on them, providing scientific, historical evidence and scriptural evidence. Yes, sir. So, so we, were, we were trying to put it in that math because whatever we are experiencing uh, in our life, we, 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 what, what we don't have really is a direct result of what we don't know. Hmm. So my people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. Well, if my people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge in nature for every action there is, it's equal and opposite reaction. If destruction comes from a lack of knowledge on a specific subject, then rebuilding comes from the acquisition of knowledge on that subject. Mm -hmm. Men have not been able to be the kind of men we really want to be and know we should be. And women have not been able to find that man or help mold that man. So by reverse engineering of this verse, going from the was to the to the spake to the understood to the thought, we, wow. we reversed it. Now I'm gonna give you a book. Here's how you're so supposed to think of what a man should be. Yes, sir. And then as you think it, you start understanding it because what what gives you understanding is when you can under answer the question why. And whenever in the book, what we try to do is not just show the qualities of the man, but why are these the traits of a real man? Come on, yes, sir. And you began to 
after you understand, now you start speaking like a man. And John 1 and 1 says, Brother Vaughn, in the beginning was the word. But the word didn't stay a word. It said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word was God. Yes, sir. 12 verses later, the word now becomes flesh and dwells among men. Mm. So, so that thought that produces the understanding that causes a man to start speaking like a man. See, there's a language for everything. There's a language of success and there's a language of failure. Mm. There's a, yeah, go get around any group of people that are successful and you will find that they talk the same way about the same stuff. Listen, but you get around a group of people that have become unsuccessful and failed in various avenues in life. And you'll notice that their language is a lot of complaining, blaming, Ooh. A, a, a lot of ease seeking, a lot of fun having. And, and when you get around the successful people, they're talking a lot about dreams, plans, goal setting, getting things done, making it happen, meeting and overcoming, healthier, thinking better, having. So so it's a it's a language of success and it's a language of failure. And it's a language of going from boy to man and going from regular man to well-made man to become a God. And that's what we strive to do in this book, get us to change thought, understanding, and then change the way we talk as men that ultimately will make that word flesh and we will become that well-made man. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> brothers and sisters, if you got something from that as much as I got from that, I need you to go ahead and put a number one in the chat right now. My guest is student minister Nuri Muhammad. My goodness, wow. Oh, crazy. Wow. Let's keep it moving really quickly as we move on forward, big brother. Now, when I read that, that scripture that is, it reminded me of one of my favorite movies that came out in 2001. You, I'm sure you might have seen it as well. It's the movie starring Tyrese Gibson called Baby Boy. Boy. <laughs> Baby Boy. He plays a character brother minister named Jody, who was a grown man, but not quite ready to let go of his immature ways, right? You've seen this, you've seen the movie, right? So right. y'all seen the movie, y'all seen the movie, put a one in the chat. Joe, this, this is a question about Jody. And sisters, I wanna <laughs> come your way with this one. I wanna come your way with this one. We hear women say all the time, brother minister, that they want a well-made man, but they keep bumping into Jody. <laughs> so the question is this, what is it about our culture that keeps producing Jodies? How do we break that cycle? Well, you know, of course, the, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, serving as a divine doctor, uh, assessed the condition of us as a people and listened to his analysis of what is wrong and why we are in the condition that, he, that we're in. He said these words. He said 90% of our problems that we suffer from as a people were born out of slavery and plantation life. Wow, wow. So when we go back and we look at the 400 years of slave making, slave breaking, and slave mastering of us as a people, there's a social law that says this, Brother Vaughn. Yes, sir that whatever you impose on a group for three generations becomes a second nature to that group. And yes. you no longer have to impose it on that group anymore. That group will develop systems to impose it on themselves. Mm. Well, in the world of sociology, a generation is only 20 years. So all it takes is for 60 years of treating a group a certain way and after that time period, that group would develop their own systems to keep that in play as second nature going beyond the three generations. Wow. Well, slavery wasn't three generations. It was 20. Right. So you're talking about for 20 generations, it was illegal for a black man to marry a black woman. Mm. For 20 generations, it was against the law for a black father to take care of their black child. For 20 generations, they would find 
a black man that had no love for a woman and another fertile black woman from another plantation with no love for a man. Throw the two inside of the horse's stable, make them have intercourse with each other to bring birth to a slave that that man was never able to become a maintainer, protector and provider for that woman and never become a father to that child. So when you have 20 generations of putting the woman into a frozen psychological state where she's independent without a man and making that man to be only a physical reproducer of life, but never a nurturer, never a trainer, never an example, never a man to that boy. Then now you have a baby boy as a secondary habit, secondary nature, a culture that went on for 20 generations that now we've developed our own systems to keep it in play. Wow. So it's very important. There's a verse in the Quran uh, to the brothers, but it also, when you invert it, it could be for the sisters. Listen to this. It says to the brothers, and your wives are not to you as your mothers. Hmm. In other words, when you are a man and you get in a relationship with a woman, that woman is not supposed to be your new mother. But the sisters on the flip side need to know that if the woman is to the man not to be the mother, then you as a woman cannot let that man in your life be to you as a son. Wow. As a black, as a black woman, you have to listen to this, sisters. You have to regulate and properly channel your nature, which is to nurture, to console, to comfort, and to 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 look out after men and women, males and females, sons and daughters. You have yes, to sir. channel that only for your sons and daughters and only for children and not be that kind of nurturer for a full grown man. Mm. So that mathematics uh, is put into play. One, we are operating in 2023 under systems, social, political and economic that make the woman work, give her the job, give her the higher salary and put the man in a position where he's unemployed, underemployed and doesn't make a fair wage even when he does work. Meaning right. she can be maintained a protector and a provider, which is the nature of a man, but he cannot. So 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 they've they've created an environment that keeps their system of slave breaking in place. And we've participated in it by allowing our women to be to us as mothers, as men and sisters. You've allowed that man in your life to be to you as your son. Ooh. Don't let him be your son. And mm. brothers, don't let her be your mother. And if we do that, if you say I'm a maintain, protect and provide as a man. And I am going to be the nurturer and the provider for my children, but I'll comfort and console and be a help me to the man, but I'm not going to be his mother. Then we will be able to stop the systems we've put into place to maintain what the white man started 400 years ago. Wow. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest is brother, student minister Nuri Muhammad. He is the author of six books. And the one we're discussing tonight is called A Well made man you can get it at his website nuri muhammad.com brother minister we've got just enough time to squeeze one more question in before we go to break okay check this out this book is full of powerful quote after quote after quote chock full of wisdom about the subject through my reading of it i came across one that just blew my top as they say on one of those, in fact, it was on page 23. You say this, Brother Minister. You say a well-made man has willpower, not wish power. <laughs> Before we go to break, can you please expand on this powerful quote? Wow. Well, there, there uh, this chapter uh, deals with the characteristics of a well-made man by showing that the Lord's Prayer is not a uh, command that we ball up with our eyes closed on our knees and our hands in front of us and throw in the outer space. Right. But the Lord's Prayer really is a spiritual mirror 
for what a father and a man should be. I learned this from the minister. There was a sister that asked him a question. She said, how will I know a real man when I meet one? I said, man, that's a good question. And the minister's answer was very short. Look at this. Remember, question, how will I know a real man when I meet one? Answer from the minister. Sister, study the Lord's prayer. That is a description of what a real man looks like. Come on. So we have to, to relook at and really renegotiate and recalibrate our brain to stop thinking of the Lord's prayer as a command we sit in the outer space and start looking at it as characteristics of a man and a father that we manifest on this planet earth. So one of those points, it says in the Lord's prayer, thy will be done. Yes, sir. Th thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Well, well, if thy will be done, this means that a real man doesn't wish things into existence. He wills things into existence. Listen, y'all. What it, What is the will? The will is the faculty of the conscious mind. It is the power that the mind has over its own actions. You've heard of mind over matter. That's mm -hmm. one level of willpower. But the highest expression of willpower is not mind over matter. It's mind over mind. Listen. It's whenever a man can check his own stinking thinking. Whatever is in his mind that is causing him to want to slow down, give up, give in, or quit doing that which he said he was going to do or he should be doing. You, It takes willpower. It takes mental muscle to say, you know what? I'm going to do what I should do when I should do it, whether yeah. I feel like doing it or not. That's this. Right. You know right. what? I'm going to maintain this action even after the excitement wears off. And once a man makes up in his mind that he's willing to have commitment, maintain an action long after the excitement has worn off, discipline, do what you should do when you should do, do it, whether you feel like doing it or not. You don't have wish power no more. You got willpower. Come on. Mm. And a God, a man, a father doesn't right. wish for things. He wills things into existence. You are God and you can do what God's do. Brothers and sisters, right here, this side, right here, that is Brother Minister Nuri Muhammad. This is DJ Rockwell. You are watching the Rockwell Radio Show. This is the home of the NY Hip Hop Network. This is where the music meets the mission. And again, we're so glad to have our brother with us. We only have him for 60 minutes. We have now evaporated 30 plus minutes of that time. So don't go away. Since we got more coming for you in this next half. So don't change the channel. We'll be right back. <laughs> This is your brother, brother Willie Muhammad, and I'm asking each and every one of you all to tune into the DJ Rockwell Show live online. Peace. Ah. Peace. This is your sister Aisha, the mental resurrectionist, hailing out of Baltimore, Maryland. Listen, whenever I'm online, I always tune into the Rockwell Radio Show. It's that hype. It's that dopeness, and you should tune in too. Peace to my brother David. And DJ Rockwell for holding it down, locking it down, giving us those sounds. Love y'all. Peace. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Sister Latasha Muhammad. And when I'm online, I rock with the Rockwell Radio Show.
tuned in to the NOI Hip Hop Network. You already know what it is. Let's go! Worldwide. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Download the Final Call Radio app and take us everywhere. On your phone, on your computer, on your tablet, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also log on to FinalCall.com and click the Listen Live button. Or FinalCallRadio.com. Final Call, Final Call Radio. The official voice of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back, we're back, we're back. This is your brother, DJ Rockwell, the nation's number one DJ, and you're watching the Rockwell Radio Show, Big Dave. Let's remind them once again of the three rules of watching the show. One thing you got to do is go ahead and hit that like and share button, tag somebody to let them know that we're here, and go ahead and subscribe to the Rockwell Radio Show today on YouTube. Brother Minister, we thank you so much for your time. This book... Ladies and gentlemen, go get your copy at nurimohammed.com. It is an awesome read. And it's not all just for the fellas. Sisters, don't go away because we're going to come your way and talk about what in this book is for you. So, big brother, let's move along real quick with the second line of questioning. You were recently in North Carolina. You yeah. stayed crisscrossing the country working for our teacher, working for our people. And my God, I saw a clip that blew my mind. Big Dave, show them what's happening in North Carolina. Real quick, let's get it. This is my favorite part. Our brother Coach P, our brother Khalid, teaching the young soldiers how to throw that one, throw that two, get them some self-esteem. Our brother TC, the champ, warming it up with the soldiers. We taught them the foundations of boxing, conflict resolution, entrepreneurship. Then our brother student minister, Noor Muhammad, came out and he lit it up. He was dropping gems. I'm gonna give you a little bit at the end, so stay tuned. Here you go with the future shining bright. We had a whole lot of guests, all the way from our minister Paul Scott in Durham to our brother Jeremiah Wusu from the Cleveland Browns. But listen close, tap in. Because it is a biological reflex when you're not focused on what's in front of you, your body automatically begins to reduce its speed for safety. So to keep you from tripping, falling, and hurting yourself or running into something, the natural biological reflex, when you're not focused on what you're supposed to be focused on, you focus on other people, you immediately begin to slow down. Mm -hmm. So in the race of life, the worst thing you can do is start looking around comparing yourself to everybody else. Come on, brother. You want to know what everybody else is doing because you're going to slow down and maybe you can stop the race or lose the race. Ladies and gentlemen, wow. That was our big brother, Minister Nuri Muhammad, recently in North Carolina. Here, here's where I want to go with this. Everywhere you go, young people are attracted to the presentation of student minister Nuri Muhammad. And I want to try to bust up a narrative, if you will. There's been a narrative that young people, as they say in the street, ain't checking for us. The narrative says that they're not attracted to what we have to offer. But when I look at your work, no matter where you go, you are surrounded by the youth. What's up with that false narrative? And and is there any way to it at all, really? Well, you know, I, it, it is to some extent. Um, you know, if if the the young see those in front of them and they look like they are one way on a podium and different in reality, then then you automatically become demagnetized uh, to young young people. This is a generation that would rather have uh, real hate than fake love. 
Ooh. That's the nature of, of the fearless ones among us. They, they don't like the fake and the phony because they're raised in an era where that's all they see is fake and phony. So when, you, when you're dealing with a generation that was born in Instagram, born in TikTok, born in social media, where everybody is perpetrating the fraud and putting up a front, acting like they are or are doing or, are, or have something that they really don't even possess. And, and these people meet them in real life. Then they start meeting, they, they meet people that, that, are, that are frauds. So if you come and you are the real you, same on the camera as off the camera, then Allah, God blesses you to make a connection with them because they're looking for something real. They'd rather have, they'd rather have real love Listen. instead of, instead of, you know, real hate versus fake love. They, right. they would choose real hate over fake love, but they really want real love. So Come we on. have a saying that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And yes, I sir. think that, um, you know, the minister said this to me once that Allah, and he said it, you know, with tears in his eyes, Allah has blessed you with an appeal with the most difficult segment of our population, which are the young. He said, they don't listen to a lot of people, but they love listening to you. So I don't know, Brother Vaughn, if it's uh, the way I had to learn or if it's, I don't know what it is, but I'm just trying to accept my own and be myself. Come on, come on. And I don't, I don't, I try not to, if you listen to the way that I talk and represent, very rarely will you hear I, very rarely will you hear you, you always hear we and us mm -hmm. and i never uh try try my best to never exclude myself from any message of of correction or what needs to be done to get yes, where sir. we're trying to go yes uh, and i think that the young soldiers uh they they are attracted to that and and the fact that uh i had to learn in a way because i never read a book before i joined the nation how about that only read the only book I ever read before I joined the nation was the autobiography of Magic Johnson. It was a little thin one. And I read that in the third grade just to do a book report. And every year through school, I did the same report. Just my vocabulary got bigger, so the report got longer. And I never read another book again. But when I came yes, to the nation, uh, I started going after knowledge like I used to go after money. Yes, sir. And uh, mm. I think that that whatever it is, Allah has blessed us to have uh, a magnetic appeal to the young soldiers. Did you see that that room that you were looking at? I'm saying it was at a hotel that was far away from the city. And this was a morning conference and there were hundreds on a Saturday, not getting credit for school, not school hundreds hundreds of young students and many of them paid money just to be there Come they, on came, wow. they came by law's grace and they spent uh three hours with us and with the help of Allah, whatever Allah blessed me to say and all we put in the package of presentations i think that they're in route brother vaughn to be coming in the very near future so well made me Come on now. And that's exactly what we're talking about. We are talking about your new book, A Well-Made Man. Make sure you go to his website, Nuri Muhammad, and get your copy today. And matter of fact, before I continue, let me give uh, credit to Brother Jay Maddock for that great footage of capturing that moment there in North Carolina a few weeks ago. That's right. Let's go back to this book. On page 19 of your book, Brother Minister, you t and you just referenced this in the last segment, and I wow. thought I was like, man, did he see my notes? <laughs> but I, I think th this is a great segue into this question. In the last segment, you referenced that same sister who asked the minister, "How do I find? Excuse me, how will I know when I meet a made man?" And you referred to the Lord's prayer. And I don't want to give up the book. I, I want people to go and get the book. And as you said, the minister referred her to the Lord's Prayer. And 
One of the answers he says in that piece is that one of the qualities is he will be a man that women and children can look up to. Heaven is up. Thou art in heaven. You go on to say in the, in the book. Now, here's where the question is, big brother. Many of us as men, unfortunately, sometime in our life here and there, Brother Nuri, have done things to lose what's called, as you know, the moral authority. Yes. Which makes it almost impossible for our women and our children to look up to us. So for the audience, describe what is moral authority and how do we get it back in our homes? Well, of course, you know, we, we believe, see, where there's a scripture that says this, Brother Vaughn, mm -hmm. where there's life, there is hope. Mm -hmm. So the only way that anyone is justified in disbelieving in their ability to become what the God created us to be is if you're not present on the planet anymore. Right. There's a verse in the Quran that says this. It says, Allah, God, is he who takes souls by night. And he who the decree of death has not yet passed, he causes them to wake up and live another day. Yes, sir. So, so this means that, that the God himself takes souls by night, night. What is the soul? The soul is the spiritual record of uh, or your spiritual account of everything that you're thinking, doing, and, 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 and that you... Uh, are saying so when he calculates and considers what we thought what we've said and what we've done he can determine based off of what he sees whether or not we still have the potential to be who he wants us to be yes sir and if he wakes us up this means that the god still believes in us come on well mm. if the god still believes in you who are you to disbelieve in yourself listen so where there's life there is hope and even though we as men have really failed in living up to the definition of a well-made man that will cause us to be in our father who art in heaven, meaning a man that his women and children can look up to, where there's life there so we can get back on our posts and get back, as Jesus said, at the right hand. Come on. Oh, nah, right. That's our right. rightful position. So question, question, what does it take? What qualities do you have to have in possession in order for a woman to look up to you? Listen. What qualities do you have to have in possession in order for your children to admire and look up to you as their father? And generally speaking, women the nature and language of a, of a woman is to be made secure. So, so whenever you want to make a woman secure, that that's her language. That's what she's looking for out of the relationship. Yes. Can this man make me secure? Right. So the security side comes from maintenance, spiritual, mental, physical, and economic. So in order for you to be a father or a man that she looks up to, you have to have enough wisdom in your mind where she can use you as her primary mental soundboard that she bounces what she's thinking and or experiencing or learning off of. And because you're so intelligent, you can give her back what she gave you better than she gave it to you. That produces mental security in that woman. Yes, sir. Emotional security. We have a tendency as men to be very impatient, mm. short tempered and easily set off by circumstances or words. So emotional maintenance means that I'm a man, but I'm a patient man. I'm a man, but I don't have a temper. I'm a man that thinks five times before I speak so that I may be right. I'm a man that is calm under pressure. Yes, sir. And when a woman sees a man that has control over his emotions, can check his frustration, his disappointment, his anger or his depression or sadness and still move forward with a smile on his face, she feels secure emotionally. Then, of course, mm. the physical side of it, a man should be a protector, 
she should know that she does not have a punk for a man. Come on, that part. See, real men open doors for their women. Real men walk on the side of the street in the parking lot where the cars could could potentially hit him, never hit her. Listen. Real men walk in the house first to make sure everything is okay. Real men talk to the bill collectors. Real men talk to the host at the restaurant. Real men pay the bill. Real men settle the disagreements that come up inside of the home. See, when a man is, is physically a protector, you provide security for that woman. And then, of course, it is written, Brother Vaughn, in the gospel of Big Mama. I know y'all never heard of the gospel of Big Mama, but Big Mama got a gospel, some stuff that she said is just as true as Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. To a family that prays together. Stay Stays together. Come on. That's not, that's not in the Bible. That's Big Mama that said that. But it's the truth. You lie down with dog, you're going to get up with fleas. Big Mama, that's not the Quran. Big Mama said that. Why would he buy the cow when he can build, get the milk from free? You didn't get that from Leviticus or Deuteronomy or Numbers. Oh. That came from Big Mama. Well, well, Big Mama said this. Romance without finance is a nuisance. Say it, say it, say it. So when a man... Is, see, to be a man that a woman looks up to, you have to be a go-getter. Mm. To be a man that a woman looks up to, you have to be a hunter. You have to be somebody that knows how to make things happen. Come on. You you have to be a hard working man that works smart and works hard at the same time to make sure that he always has the resources that whatever she wants that she's able to get or at least be able to know whatever they need is always going to be provided. And whenever you operate from the mental, the spiritual, the emotional, the physical and the financial maintenance. Of course, the spiritual maintenance means that you are a moral man, a righteous man, an upright man. You lead your family in prayer. And whenever words are put on the table or problems are laid out before you quote anything that you read or seen on Facebook, you quote from your faith book. Come on, come on. That's how spiritual men do. Come on. I don't, I don't, I shouldn't have to, in order for you to get an answer to your problem, show you a clip of some dude talking on social media. I should be able to be able to tell you, well, honey, you don't, don't don't ever forget that Paul said in, 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 in Romans, Paul said this, that, and the other. Right. Don't ever forget that. You remember what, what the was the scripture says in red writing in the book of Mark, Jesus said this, that. See, everything that comes up in life, you should be able to have a spiritual answer that is rooted in the mind of God that comes from one of his scriptures, not just empirical data from the knowledge of this world, not even just science or social media. You should be able to have some spiritual knowledge. Listen. You should be a moral and an upright man. And let me tell you something, whenever a man in a, in a behind everywhere world, whenever a man in a world where, where black men now outnumber black men, women seven to one, when he can maintain his discipline and be loyal to and stay faithful to the woman that he's with in that kind of world, you go up several notches in the mind of the woman that's with you. Come on. So when you have discipline to be loyal, when you have righteousness in order to speak and do that which is good and that which is correct, when you have scriptural knowledge that she can bounce anything off of and you know how to give her a verse from the Quran, a verse from the Bible, something the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said or the minister said this in a letter. When you've got that kind of arsenal, then that then now you become our father who art in heaven. Listen, mm. your children will admire you, look up to you and want to be just like their daddy when they grow up. And your woman will be so secure with a man like that looking up to you she she that's how you bring out the little girl that's inside of your woman Woo. see the reason why our women are so aggressive so forceful and and dominate with language or even cuss and it it's a turnoff for us as men because you as a man you don't want a hard woman you want a soft woman right you don't want a woman that outcusses you. Want, you want a woman that has a kind word and a gentle spirit. Right. You don't want a mean, cold woman. You want a soft, 
pleasant woman that every time you see her, she's beautiful, smells good, smile on her face mm -hmm. in a calm spirit. That's what you want. Mm -hmm. But you can't expect her to be an angel until you make a heaven for her. Listen. And when you make a heaven for her, the angel will come out of her. When you provide that level of security, then you will bring out, I don't want to say the little girl, but you understand what I'm saying. Indeed. She Indeed. feels so secure that she doesn't have to worry about the traditional struggles in life that keeps her in the mode that she's got to be aggressive, forceful, and a dominant person. No, she got a man that is already doing that for the whole family, and she's in a state of peace. Now, I can be the help me. I can be the comfort. Right. I can be the consoler. I can be that entity inside the institution called our home that provides you with peace and quietness of mind because you've given me a heaven. Therefore, I'm going to be your angel. You've provided me with so much security that I don't have to be a hard, aggressive woman. I can be with you as a little girl, kind, nice, sweet and loving with no real stress from the responsibilities of life. That's the kind of man that women will look up to. That's the kind of men Come on. that children will admire and want to be like. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. I Sorry for the long answer. <laughs> Good night. Thank y'all for watching the Rockford Radio Show. We can, we can stop right there. <laughs> I, I, I want to thank you, Brother Minister, for blowing up the chat room. The sisters are blowing up the chat room right now as we speak. I guarantee it. <laughs> so so, so I, I told you it was coming your way. And we're at the home stretch now. And I want to again thank you once again for granting us some of your time. It means the world to me. Um, right. Let's run through the tape as we get to the finish line here. And I don't want to give too much of the book away. I want people to go to the website, nurimohammed.com, and get this book. But there's so much that I'm excited to talk about. Listen to this, Brother Minister. I was blown away by the story you tell in the 12th section or chapter of the book entitled Lessons from the Elephant. Yeah. I was there in Chicago a few weeks ago when you taught the lecture entitled From Colony to Community. Am I saying that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I Colony was there mm -hmm. when you incorporated that subject into your lecture. Absolutely brilliant. And again, I don't want to give it away, but suffice it to say, what the story points to is the gap that exists between the elder and the younger generations and the impact is had and the fact that it was intentionally engineered to happen. Yes. So what are some of the things that we can do in the process of making well-made young men? And you've kind of answered it already, but perhaps we can go a little further. What can we do to bridge this gap between yes. the young and the elders? That's a beautiful question. You know, of course, uh, we, we have to we have to always remember uh, in 1712, brothers and sisters, uh, for the business of slavery, a business consultant was hired by the American slave masters to teach them in the business of slavery how to get the best uh, productivity from their business. So they hired a what you would call a business consultant who also had a successful plantation in the West Indies by the name of Willie Lynch. He was hired by the slave masters of America to do a comparison of his very productive and successful plantation versus the plantations in America and what could be done or changed to make them more successful. And of course, a successful plantation means great for white people, but hell for the black man and woman. Say that. Look at what Willie Lynch said. He said that I have outlined a number of differences among the slaves and I make them bigger than what they really are. Mm -hmm. And he told them that if you follow my plan for one year consistently, 
The slaves will become self-refueling, self-perpetuating for 300 years, maybe even a thousand. And he named a list of 11 differences that we had as a people that nature gave us. And he taught them how to exploit them. The top of the list, he said, was age. Come on. The top of the list was age. He said, I put the old slave against the young slave and the young against the old. So ever since 1712, when they first hired in the business consultant, Willie Lynch, to help make better slaves and make plantations more productive for white heaven to be produced. They knew that they had to create a gap between the young and the old. Why? The formula, Brother Vaughn, for learning. Yes, sir. Is a is an acronym. It's a word that's an acronym, meaning each letter in the word represents another word. The yes, formula sir. for learning is called CORE, C-O-R-E, which stands for communication, observation, reading, and experimentation. The two primary forms of learning that come before reading or even experimenting is communication and observation. This means that the majority of people's learning doesn't come from what they get in a book. It comes from what they observe in other people that are in their environment and what they learn by experimenting with what they learn from their environment. Yes, sir. So if I can keep the, the young away from the old and then make it illegal for them to even read a book, now they have no access on what it means to be a man or a woman. Mm. So the minister said this. He said they have always worked tirelessly to ensure that there was in every generation. Listen to these words. No continuity of struggle. Wow. Continuity of struggle, meaning that we've got a goal. We have a we have an objective. I'm running my leg of the relay. But I might have to pass the baton on to you. But in order for me to pass the baton, number one, you got to be in the race. Number two, you got to have your hand out. Number three, I have to run my leg like I should and make sure I hand it off to you. Yes, sir. But when there's no continuity of struggle, then that means that the one running with the baton is not running towards someone that's there to get it. No mm. hand is out. Nobody's there. So once you separate the young from the old, as you see now, then you have major impediments because to be a man, you got to meet a man. To be a woman, you have to meet a woman. Very few people are going to get enough books that they can read and apply to become what they're going to become. Most of what's going to make us who and what we're going to be is going to be based upon the people that we are around that we call mothers, fathers, friends, and family. Come on, right. But if the old are mad at the young, the young are mad at the old. As we've seen in that story that's in the book, 60 Minutes did a show called The Rogue Elephant on June 14th of 2014. You can see a clip or two of it on YouTube for a few minutes. Look up The Rogue Elephant, 60 Minutes. And, and in the story, what, what they found in a nutshell is they, in Pellensburg Park, the elephants began to quote unquote overpopulate. They decided to come in, kill off all the adults, spare the young helicopter airlift the young and drop them off in Kruger Park, but leave them in Kruger Park without no adult supervision. Next thing you know, the the uh, young elephants in Kruger Park were labeled juvenile delinquents. Look at that. Look at and that. rogue elephants because they had began to kill off the right white rhinos, fight and kill each other. The female young elephants stopped looking after their own young. And the next thing you know, they began engaging in laziness, arguing, quarreling, and engaging illicit sexual activity without the aim of even being fathers and mothers to the young elephants they brought into the world. Sound familiar. If that don't sound like the black community, I don't know what does. So they decided after they began to throw off the ecosystem in Kruger Park, they decided to come in and kill off all of those elephants too. And one of the scientists raised his hand and said, well, before we do that, I just want to try something because they didn't used to be like that in Pellensburg Park. Let, let's, can we go back to Pellensburg Park and see if we can find any adult 
elephants still alive and bring them over to Kruger Park and see what happens if we drop them off. Come on. So they went back to uh, Pellensburg Park and and found among them nine adult elephants. Helicopter airlifted the nine adult male elephants, dropped them off in Kruger Park. Next thing you know, within two weeks, the whole ecosystem became back in balance. The young began to get up. The mothers began taking care of the young. They stopped engaging in illicit sexual activity, stopped killing rhinos, stopped fighting, arguing, quarreling, and killing each other. They went back into peace and harmony with one another just with two weeks of the adult males being present among the young. Look, look. Mm. That happened in the jungle in South Africa, and it can happen in the concrete jungles in North America. Listen. The men just have to stand up and be the men that we're supposed to be and begin regulating the affairs in our community, not by walking down the street, pointing out what everybody's doing wrong, but by walking down the street, driving down the street and living in the neighborhood, being an example of what right looks like. And if we did that, we would be not helicopter airlifted and dropped off, but our minds would be helicopter, helicopter airlifted up and our practice would be Come different. On. Come and on. find that the ecosystem that we call the hood will be back in the harmony and balance and we can put the word neighbor back on it. Instead of being at the hood, it can be the neighbor hood like it should right. be. Right. Wow. Big day. I'm blown away blown away you are tuned in ladies and gentlemen to the rock world radio show this is where the music meets the mission this is the home of the ny hip-hop network and my guest tonight is our big brother student minister nuri muhammad and we're at the home run now we're at the, we're at the home line we're at the finish line pardon me of this interview and we've we've gone over just a few minutes can i have can i get two more questions in yes please that's fine yes sir now, now, this, sisters, I said we were coming your way. Turn your antennas on. Turn your turn your radio up. Turn your TV up. Turn your phone up. Because we're about to come to you with this question. Listen up, sisters. Because there's something in this that's also for them. Our, what's the word I want to say? Our restoration means your elevation, sisters. Watch this, though. Let's go to the sisters because they've been waiting on this one. I have heard many sisters say, Brother Minister, they've tell stories after stories how they keep attracting the wrong man after the wrong man after the wrong man. The same type of men, if you will, keep attracting the wrong type of man. What can women do to attract a well-made man? Well, well, of course, as you open the show up, telling the audience the first place you even heard of the term well-made man was in the book, the Holy Quran, 19th chapter, the 17th verse. Yes, sir. And, and it reads, listen to this sisters. And it reads talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. And she screened herself from men. And we sent our spirit unto her in the form of a well-made man. So what made Mary a magnet for a well-made man is that she screened herself from men. Wow. Y'all, you didn't hear that. Ooh, come on, come on, come on. Mm. What made Mary a magnet for a well-made man full of the spirit of God was she screened herself from men. So what will cause you to be able to attract a well-made man to you is you have to start screening yourself from the men of this world. Now, there's a lot of things that can be done to screen yourself. One, you can't be too open in conversation with men. You can't be too public of a persona and you cannot be in the public fraternizing or flirting or setting thirst traps for the man that you want. Ooh, not the thirst traps. So screening yourself has something to do with the way you carry yourself and the way you carry yourself has a lot to do with your language, your speech, with the way you communicate with the opposite sex, with how much mystery you allow to, to exist 
in you. See, a man doesn't want something that is already exposed. A man wants something that is a mystery. So a real man is attracted to that which is screened and that which is hidden. So the well-made man that was full of the spirit wanted Mary because she was screened. Yes. If you keep reading the verse, it says about this woman, Mary, that the men, many men had began to fight and argue with one another as to who would have care of her. Right. Not who would play with her. Mm. Not who would have sex with her. Not 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 who would would hit that. Not who would smash that, but who would have care for her. So how did Mary dress? How did Mary talk? How did Mary carry herself that men weren't thinking about hitting that or smashing, but they were thinking about caring for her? Listen, listen. So renegotiate your contract with the way you present yourself to the public and keep that mystery alive in the way you carry yourself and dress. The Holy Quran says this to the men and women, that women, when you talk to men, lower your gaze. Right. And men, when you talk to women, you should lower your gaze. In other words, do not look at the opposite sex in the eye for a long period of time. Look, recognize, and then go off the, off the air with, with them looking in the eye. Keep a certain amount of mystery to yourself. Screen yourself from men. Listen, sisters, don't focus on getting a man. Focus on becoming the kind of woman that you think would be the ideal mate for the man you're looking for. And if you become the woman you're supposed to be, then the sewer 2432 says that God himself will send you a spouse out of his grace. He is a matchmaker. The well-made man full of the spirit doesn't have to be looked for, sought after, and you don't have to lure them in. Be you and be what you're supposed to be and screen yourself from men and you will be a merry type of magnet. Listen, man. Wow. Wow. I got to get out with another applause. I see the sisters blowing up again. <laughs> the chat room is, is going in right now. Go ahead. If you're getting something from this, sisters, brothers, hit that share button, hit that like button, because I'm telling you, you ain't going to get nowhere else. You, can, you can't get this from no one else but the Rockwell Radio Show. Check this out. We're at the end with this one, Brother Minister Noreen. Yes, sir. And this probably might be the most difficult question of all because it, it might, quote, unquote, put you on the spot. But you might enjoy this kind of spot. I want to talk about our wonderful teacher, our standard bearer, our example, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan with this question. The well-made man of the time. The well-made man of the times. Brother Minister Nuring, if you only had to pick three, only three qualities of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that make him the well-made man of our time. What three qualities would you pick about him? The minister is love personified. So number one, I would say love. Number two, I would say love. <laughs> Come on. And number three, well, I would say love again. <laughs> but the reason I say love for all three is because love is not an emotion. Love is the mother of all emotion. Love is so profound of a divine and human expression that when the scientists of scripture and faith were interpreting how to properly define what love was, they couldn't find anything in the language that was a good enough synonym for love. So the scripture says it like this. God is love. Yes. Is in mathematics is an equal sign. And when you have an equal sign, whatever's on the right side has the same power as what's on the left. So the minister 
is all God all the time. Yes. Because he's all love all the time. Mm -hmm. He is love personified. He is that perfected representative among us, mm -hmm. that example at the top of the page of life. He is, he is the well-made man. We would be successful if we strove hard to be what he is wherever we are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wherever we are, whatever we do, be a far kind of it. Come on. I think that we would have a great nation and we would have all of our problems solved. No more disagreement, no more heartache, no more pain, no more sadness, depression, no more unfulfilled uh, dreams and aspirations. We would become the perfect nation, a nation of gods. Brothers and sisters, that's our brother, student minister Nuri Muhammad. Brother, we thank you. We thank we, we we went over about maybe what 10 minutes a day, I don't know, 50. But we thank you for every moment that you have spared to no, feed man. us, to grow no, us, to develop us on this particular topic, this book, which everybody should go get right now. In fact, in the description area of this video, you will see the link that you can click to order your copy of A Well Made Man. Dear brother, as we always do with our guest on the Rockwell Radio Show, we afford you the last word. All praise is due to Allah. I just want to say thank you, Brother Vaughn, Brother Dave. Thank you, staff of the Rockwell Radio Show. It has been an honor, privilege, sharing space and time with you. And I pray to Allah that all of the viewers that you have left tonight with some news that you can use. Come on. And you are prepared to go to work and to war with self that we can be today better than what we were yesterday and then tomorrow better than what we are today and gradually keep on making those slight adjustments and improvements until one day we will land at that function and post that we were promised and that is to be uh, well a well-made man and a well-made woman a god Thank you all so much. Assalamu alaikum. I tell you what, we'll see you right here next week on the Rockwell Radio Show. This is DJ Rockwell. That's Minister Nuri. And guess what? We are out of here. Now, if you got past all of that, you might as well keep on rocking with us. So come on, everybody, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh -huh. Radio show, y'all. The Rockwell Radio Show. Come on, come on. Man, come on, man. Top trip. <laughs>